everything this brother touches turns to gold. Snap judgment just got a little bit thunkier. <laughs> Please welcome to this stage, Mr. Tariq Black Thought Trial. <laughs> I am taking the stage at the Ross Gilder Festival outside Copenhagen, Denmark. There are two acts playing on the main stage. It's my band, The Roots, and it's Bruce Springsteen in the East Street Band. So, we come out, we run through our set, and it was stellar, if I do say so myself. We did a great show. Afterwards, we're in the dressing room, still reeling talking about how great the show was and how great it was that Bruce and the band stood off in the wings and watched our set in its entirety. And we started asking ourselves questions like, well, what did he think? <laughs> was his head moving? Did you, did you see him tapping his feet? And uh, stuff like that. And then in a surreal turn of events, Bruce came into our dressing room and he asked, he said, uh, you guys wanna come back out and perform with us doing our set? <laughs> Needless to say, of course we want to come back out and perform with you. Mr. Springsteen, uh, what are we going to perform? And he's going through his, his head and he says, uh, uh, maybe we'll do Born to Run, no? Maybe we'll do, uh, let's do Wrecking Ball. And he says, no, let's do the East Street Shuffle the way we did it with you guys on the show with Jimmy. Great, say no more, we're out there. We're on stage, I'm performing. Bruce Springsteen is right next to me. His lyrics, his lyric sheets are sprawled on the stage at my feet and he relinquishes his microphone to me and my partner Kirk Douglas and we're leaning in to share the mic the same way that Bruce, who's to my right, and Lil Stevie Van Zandt, who's to my left, the same way they lean in to share the mic. That's what me and Kirk were doing and we're, and we're rocking it. And, um, for me, it was a career high. I've never felt more American. I've never felt, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've never felt like more of a, an ambassador of the arts. And um, yeah, it was a career high. I remember thinking to myself, you know, we finally arrived, you know? And this is a feeling that stuck with me well into my arrival the next day at JFK Airport. So we land, coming through customs and immigration at JFK, and the VIP treatment and feeling kind of continues because we're being ushered out of the mere mortal line and into the, into the line where uh, you know, they have the diplomats into the country. So as we're coming through the diplomatic entrance, I hear a couple people, some are airport workers, others are uh, you know, just travelers, and they're saying, um, you know, who is he? <laughs> As to say, you know, who am I to be ushered through the diplomats entrance into the country? So my partner Questlove, he goes ahead of me and he's, he's, he's in, he's at the baggage claim now, easy breezy. Um, I'm expecting to come in and do the same, but there's a, a problem. So the gentleman who's looking at my passport, he looks down at my passport, looks up at me, down at the passport, up at me, and he says, uh, Surely this is something that's gonna be resolved relatively quickly, but you're gonna need to step into this room over here on the side. You know, so now I'm at JFK, I'm in the room where folks are interrogated when their name raises a red flag. Enter Officer Courtney, an asshole. <laughs> now, I'm not usually the one to prejudge, but Officer Courtney in immigrations at JFK was such an asshole that you could tell with him just sitting there doing nothing. He was a textbook asshole. So I'm sitting in the room with Officer Courtney for what felt like an eternity before he finally looks up and asks, you want to tell me about Lancaster County? And I'm thinking, Lancaster County? Um, I mean, that's where I went to college 20 years ago. Surely there can't be any matter that was left unresolved between me <laughs> and the fine people of Lancaster County, PA. 
But Officer Courtney says, no, Lancaster County wants you, so you're going to jail. Now, I try to name drop, even though it's something that I never do. I said, hey, I mean, come on, man, I'm just a, uh, I'm, I'm an entertainer from the late night show with Jimmy Fallon. I just want get, to get back home to my family for the last few hours of the weekend. Surely you can understand that. And he says, nope, you're going to jail. So I asked if I could make a phone call, and he offers to make the call for me. He calls my wife, and there's no answer. So I get to thinking about home and my daughter, who was about six years old and, you know, who wanted to see me uh, upon my arrival home from Europe. I'm thinking about my wife and the rosemary garlic chicken that I asked her to have uh, <laughs> waiting for me when I got back. And um, my wife calls back. Courtney answers the phone. Courtney, and you know, his answer to all my wife's questions about how come I hadn't returned from the airport yet and what was going on, he just says, your husband's going to jail. Bang, and he hung, <laughs> hung up the phone. So um, at this point, I feel defeated, deflated. Uh, I'm super confused. And uh, I'm being ushered out of the airport. I'm being paraded in front of some of the same people who a little while earlier were asking, you know, who's he? Now they're asking, who's he? But they're asking for a different reason. So I got handcuffs on, I'm taken out of JFK, and before I know it, I'm in Queens County Central Booking Facility, uh, being given what appears to be preferential treatment because I was in a cell that had unlimited local uh, phone access. I had a pay phone in there I could use. It had a, a clean toilet and it was directly across from the night watch desk where uh, you know, the corrections officers were staffed and they, they had to you know, watch what was going on. So I felt like you know, I was in the, the executive suite, so to speak, <laughs> of this jail. In the wee hours of the night, a, a corrections officer came and asked me to change cells and he took me from my cushy executive suite into the deeper, darker, more dank area of the jail where there were less people around and you know the, there was less of a watchful eye being kept and I'm wondering what I did to deserve this downgrade you know so I'm there and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and finally the guy comes back and um, I'm, I'm, I'm essentially his captive audience he begins to to perform <laughs> so I'm on one side of the bars, he's on the other side, he's performing his demo for me. <laughs> and he's explaining to me, you know, that, you know, his name is Darnell McCormick, but his stage name is D-Nails. And he's like, you know, my whole angle is the fact that I'm a corrections officer, but I'm proud of it, see? It's a lot of these other motherfuckers, they corrections officers, they try to keep it on a low. So that's gonna be my whole angle. I'm D-Nails, I'm 5-0. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, I have uh, 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 two options. I could play along and uh, you know, act as if he was you know, one of the greatest artists I'd ever heard and try and expedite my uh, release or I could keep it 100 and just tell him the truth what I really felt about his music. So, needless to say, I said, hey man, you sound great. <laughs> I said, uh, I said, man, we should exchange information and when I get out, we should maybe link up and do something, you know? <laughs> so, we exchange information and I hear some of the other corrections officers asking D-Nails, who's he? And I hear them saying stuff like, uh, hey, it's Will I Am. <laughs> it's, uh, that's, uh, that's Mr. Cheeks from the Lost Boys over there. <laughs> nah, silly, it's Quest Love. It's two chains. All sorts of stuff. So I sit there, I wait, I wait, and finally I'm released. Uh, with no time to spare before duty calls. So it's now Monday afternoon, it's time for me to report to my day job. So I get out, I had a few words with my attorney, and he directed me to the subway. I jumped on the train, ride from Queens, and the train stops in the bottom of Rockefeller Center. I run up the stairs, jump on the elevator, run into Studio 6B, still just totally bewildered. I'm like, you know, what just happened? 
And before I know it, I'm on stage. I got my signature fedora, a suit jacket, and uh, no, no shoelaces still, no belt. <laughs> but I'm on stage, and Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon makes mention of me in, in his uh, monologue. He says, Tariq Trotter, ladies and gentlemen, from The Roots, give it up, come on. Come on, give it up for Tariq Trotter from The Roots, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm thinking, thank you. I'm thinking, uh, you know, as I look down at the monitor to make sure that it, I look cool without my laces in my belt and that you couldn't tell that I just, literally just had gotten out of jail. And um, I'm thinking Tariq Trotter from The Roots. Who's here? Thank you.